Yo, what's up guys? Chase the Batman here. Wait, hold on. Uh, something's not right. Yo, Sleepy Sheepy here. Today we're going to be looking at a super fun cosplay build, and this is going to be the Dark Knight. So we're going to be running mostly the martial arts moveset. So we have both Dane's heavy footwork as well as the dry leaf arts, and this is going to give us a lot of different options. So I feel like the Ash of War Raptors of the Mist is going to be really nice just because it puts you in kind of that Batman position, and then also it combos nicely into a very nice heavy attack which is going to be kind of the bread and butter of this moveset and then we also have the dry leaf arts as a different option with the dry leaf whirlwind ash of war which also just feels very batman-y so those are going to be great options there we're going to be boosting those kick attacks with the shattered stone talisman we also have the rotten wing sword insignia and millicent's prosthesis to boost our successive attacks and then we have the bull goat talisman to give us 115 poise which is a pretty good break point uh, we also have our stun grenades as well as our knockout gas which are going to be very useful as we uh, are delivering mostly physical damage which is going to be great for the freezing pot and then obviously a good sleep pot is always nice to just you know subdue enemies so those are going to be some pretty good options to have on hand and then as for the armor i think that this is pretty true to a batman look uh, we have the helm of night as well as the armor of solitude with the gauntlets and greaves of solitude the armor of solitude could be swapped over to the knight's cavalry since you still have that nice dark cape but I think the Armor of Solitude looks great just because, you know, it's like pretty buff looking and has a very distinct black cape, which is very Batman-y. So yeah, overall, I would say this is an extremely fun build to run. It's pretty strong given all the successive attack bonuses and you just have a, a lot of different options. So Raptors of the Mist, I think, is pretty good for this type of moveset. Uh, if you get hit, especially by pokey weapons, like you know, uh, Gug's Crouch Poke or something, you're going to be able to uh, just kind of punish that pretty well with Raptors of the Mist. And then we also have the uh, Dry Leaf Whirlwind, which uh, on its own is not super strong, but if you do get your opponent poise chipped, you know, just, you know, hitting them once and they don't get poise broken, then your next attack uh, can often be the Dry Leaf Whirlwind. And that's going to work really, really well with the success of attacks because it's so many hits in a row and especially if you're getting the nice poise break for the multiple hits to add up uh, you're going to be doing a lot of great damage oh i also forgot to mention the one sneaky element of this build and that's the option to switch our shattered stone talisman and swap over to the fine crucible feather talisman which is going to enhance our back steps and this is basically going full bat mode where you can go for ravioli steps and grab some nice ravioli back step back steps and we'll be going for that periodically it's definitely something that i recommend as a hard swap for somebody that um, is going for a little bit more of a challenge because this will increase the amount of damage that you take if you're running the fine crucible feather talisman and you don't want to have that on for uh, too much time you kind of want to be selective with it and it also takes away a talisman that is going to buff your heavy attack so uh, periodically you know if the time is right we might go for some ravioli back steps and grab some backstabs uh, but I don't recommend running that all the time it's just kind of a fun way to finish it um, and we'll talk more throughout the video about when it's a good time to go for it and how you can manage to grab those backstabs but it's gonna be pretty fun I feel like it's also kind of makes sense for the cosplay because you know Batman is you know pretty sneaky um, <laughs> and can you know get around people um, in some kind of unique ways so overall I strongly recommend you give this a try and that's pretty much all I wanted to say about this we're mostly going to be defending the storehouse of Gotham but we will periodically make our way over to other places as well. Um, if you have any questions, definitely let me know. And uh, yeah, if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing, I'd appreciate it. All right, so our first invasion is gonna be in the tower settlement area. And this is definitely a bit of a doozy. We're gonna have, uh, you know, players coming into the world uh, and they don't really stop coming once they start coming. So we're gonna try to just kind of maintain pressure, uh, focus on individual players that we think we can finish off quickly and really just use the layout of this particular area to our advantage. The main goal here is to kind of use walls and corners to let ourselves get some jump attacks or um, some isolation 
isolated moments with different players. This is going to be also really beneficial to grab, um, you know, sleep pots and freezing pots. Like this is a great area because people have a hard time backpedaling through these doorways. And if they're stuck in an area with sleep, then we do get a little bit more time to isolate ourselves against other players. So all good stuff there. Um, we are able to get the host slept, which gives us some time alone with the phantom and that turns it into a one-on-one -on -one, but very quickly a hunter does come into the world and they're going to be a big fan of the hand of melania ash of war so that is really something that is beneficial in an area like this like in the same way that sleep pots are going to be great for me um, the hand of melania is going to be great for them because i'm also going to have a hard time backpedaling out of there so uh, we're really cautious of that we're going to use freezing pots as well as sleep pots to either knock them out of the air uh, with frostbite or you know sleep them while they're in their long hand of melania ash of war uh, fortunately they do switch over to the bolt of grand sex which is going to make our lives a little bit easier um, and really we're just kind of playing peekaboo around this corner um, nobody wants to spend too much time in any one place which is great um, it does give us you know more isolation um, you know with individual players so as the blue goes for hand of melania we're going to back off again uh, continue to apply pressure and just kind of bait with different pots and go for some jumping attacks as we pop in however a blue has come into the world and they're going to be enjoying a light great sword um, they do have a double slash on it which is kind of cool to see uh, not a bad ash of war for that weapon um, so we run up the stairs because they're pretty aggro um, and that pulls into one of gotham's finest citizens who decides to help out the batman here and that allows us again some alone time with this blue um, really getting the moments of isolation with your opponent is going to be super beneficial so having um, somebody like this uh, horn knight you know, just distracting players is going to be fantastic. We throw a sleep pot during their very long waves of gold, Ash of War, which does allow us to work with the Gotham Citizen and finish off the blue. Um, in the meantime, the host has summoned another player. Uh, so it is going to be, you know, back to a 2v1. Um, fortunately, like this, this is why I love invading in this area so much is really like, despite any number of players coming into the world, you really have great opportunities to isolate the opponents you need to um, and especially with a build like this where you can get some nice burst damage between the um, whirlwind ash of war and just you know jump attacks and successive attacks um, this just has really nice pressure to it so um, you can start getting your opponents down to low health and really take advantage of the high pressure situation you're putting them in um, we are going to need to backpedal quite significantly here as the new Phantom has pulled out Moonveil um, and is casting some more spells, which is going to be a little bit of a problem. But fortunately, while the host backs off for a little while, they don't do a good job of covering their co. We get the co to, you know, pretty low health, but really we do want to back off here because we have such little health. Uh, they go for Cannon of Hyama, which is a pretty good move there. It can be a little bit tricky to roll. Fortunately, we do manage to uh, survive long enough and get the roll timing down to avoid a death there and then we do have just a one-on-one -on -one with the host um, they've summoned their phantom twice and they're out of blues so it is you know likely just a real one-on-one -on -one situation here um, we get them to pretty low health pretty fast um, and we're able to just go for a running light attack and finish them off and the running light attack does come out quite quite quickly so i definitely recommend that Next up, we're going to be in the storehouse of Gotham, and here we have a player that was like really trying to hide. Um, I'm not totally sure what was going on, but their friends were not nearby, so we go ahead and chase them down. Really, you can't hide from the Batman, so uh, just a couple light attacks and we're good to go. And now we focus here on the Phantom a little bit. Um, they're going to be trapped in this corner until the host comes in with Morgoth's Curve Sword and goes for their Ash of War and uh, does a good job of delivering a decent amount of damage. We're going to hard swap over to the Ailment Talisman, and if you don't know about that talisman, it increases your um, defense for whatever you've recently been procced with. So if you get bled, then your bleed defense is going to be much, much higher. So you can see the bleed bar is now quite a bit higher. Uh, and that's going to be pretty useful. Um, we do get some nice pressure here on the Phantom. We need to be looking out for the random curved sword swings from behind, uh, but we now have turned this into a one-on-one -on -one situation, which is going to be great, especially for a big slow weapon like Morgoth's curved sword. We're going to be in prime opportunity to go for the ravioli 
backstab. And we're gonna go ahead and swap the Fine Crucible uh, Feather Talisman on. So we're gonna be taking more damage for this moment, but we do have the opportunity to do uh, just a very cool Batman move. And there you see we get it successfully. We get the nice ravioli step with the Talisman iframes, and we manage to, um, you know, backstab our opponent. Honestly, um, it's mostly, like almost entirely for a style, like uh, on this type of build, we would, you know, we could set it up with a Misericord and, you know, the Dagger Talisman and actually make it do massive damage, but instead we're really just going for the Batman cosplay and trying to incorporate some of the fun new talismans and kind of the new tech that's available with these uh, new talismans in the DLC. So we go for the chase down just normally after that and um, do manage to finish off that player. <laughs> Next up, we're going to uh, be back at the tower settlement area and uh, everybody's just spawning in right when we get there. So it very quickly turns into a super aggro 3v1. Uh, fortunately, the same Gotham citizen from earlier is gonna help us out a little bit we get one Phantom to extremely low HP. Um, they go for a little bit of a turn and burn, but they don't have the health to make that work out. Um, we do need to get in and get out because everyone has kind of caught up to us. Um, they've taken care of the Gotham citizen that was so desperately trying to help us out, which we do appreciate. And now we have a player running a Blood Flame Blade on backhand blades with Blind Spot, which is uh, a bit scary. Uh, they're also Rune Arced and they have the armor set that's going to increase the amount of damage they can do. So we really need to respect uh, their setup here because you know it's it's quite strong so <laughs> we're gonna back off a little bit um, pull them into a kind of a corner where we have uh, a good view on whether or not the other phantom is gonna be joining and uh, for whatever reason, they just kind of hung back, weren't really interested in participating, so we bring the participation to them and begin uh, just kind of kicking and punching in their direction. Fortunately, there is some PvE that is now casting some spells at the Phantom, which um, is really nice to just get random poise breaks, uh, potentially interrupt their Ash of War, and just get in some damage. So this Phantom is <laughs> pretty much only going for their Ash of War, uh, so eventually we do find an opening where we can deliver just the final few kicks that we need, and and we can focus here on the host. Um, we get a nice frost pot off to get them nice and frostbitten, which is going to be quite helpful. Um, here we go for Raptors of the Mist, and that's definitely a nice punish. I think it's also a pretty nice punish on the Blind Spot Ash of War. Um, just because, you know, that kind of shuts it down and it's kind of predictable when it's going to come out if you know your opponent has it. Uh, we do get the finish there and we can move on to our next invasion here. Again, a group of three in the Go Gotham uh, Tower Settlement, or uh, <laughs> the Gotham Storehouse, excuse me. Um, and this is going to be a pretty intense start. We have um, two players running the martial arts and then we also have a wizard in the background that's just casting some big AoE spells so uh, it can be kind of difficult to dodge everything and we really want to start backpedaling into some PvE. Um, we can't really just outrun and dodge this without um, you know some walls for cover or without a little bit of a distraction so we're gonna go ahead and swap our talisman to make sure we get the maximum HP we can um, with talismans and we go ahead and swap back and and then begin to spend a little bit of time with the host here while the phantoms are distracted. Um, we really need to look out for these spells from the Co because uh, they take up quite a big area and can just combo into a lot of damage. Um, but I'm not sure if you saw that the Co just took like 600 damage and that was most of their HP bar. So we now know that one of the phantoms, uh, the mage specifically, has very low HP. So we're gonna try to focus them. Um, and in that moment, we do see that the host um, uh, the other phantom dies to PvE, and then there you can see the full 700 HP at rune level 139 that the Ko is uh, running. So, uh, fascinating decisions that players make every day. Um, I recommend leveling bigger, but it's totally up to you. Um, at this point, a blue does get summoned into the world as we were beginning to chase down the host. Uh, we do need to run away again just because there is rivers of blood as well as spells, so we don't really have a great way to focus this player. Um, here we were hoping to land Raptors of the Mist, but the attack was just a little bit too delayed to proc it, so we're going to go ahead and back off and also heal our blood loss. Um, because Rivers of Blood is going to be such a long animation, just throwing a sleep pot at your feet can be a great way to get that knockout gas in effect, um, get a couple 
couple hits in and now they're really running off and we can throw a couple of our bat shurikens in their direction and finish them off. Um, as we were chasing down the host again, another blue got summoned into the world. So we're gonna go for a nice edgy jumping attack. Uh, we get a couple quick hits in. Um, currently, <laughs> there are like two fire knights that have been aggroed. So it's kind of a gank situation where we're the ganker. Um, it's also nice too, everybody's got like red looking capes on. So it looks like a coordinated effort and a Fire Knight actually manages to get a backstab there. So it's kind of some impressive work from the Fire Knight. And here we just begin this three person chase down on the host. Uh, we send the elevator down and manage to uh, jump back up. So one of their major escapes is now uh, not an option anymore and they're just kind of stuck with all three of us. The running away tactic is not working great for them. They're getting hit with fireballs and uh, the fire knights are actually quite fast which is pretty fun to see and we're also like right on their tail so yeah, the very intense epic chase down does begin. Um, this would be a car chase scene if we were in a movie, but unfortunately we just have access to our feet. So we go for a couple kicks and manage to uh, win that invasion as well. Um, next up, we're gonna be in the back cave. So we have a group of three here. Um, and again, we're gonna be kind of using the same tactic we used in the first invasion where we're really using a, a bit of like peekaboo tactic where we can hide around corners and potentially isolate players um, when we feel the pressure from behind is uh, too much we're gonna <laughs> try to escape you know move forward through this area just run down the hallways and try to keep covered if we're gonna heal so in that moment you know we, we hop around the corner a little bit um, and here we can use that knockout gas to hopefully deter players from getting too aggressive and potentially set up some nice you know burst damage on a player that does get slept uh, we don't manage to actually convert that we get stunned by the Ash of War from the Moonlight Greatsword, which does kind of put us back on our feet. And rather than running headfirst back in, we're going to kind of regroup for a second. We know we have really powerful options with our sleep pots, just because throwing them at our feet anytime everyone gets aggro um, is just going to shut down at least one player. So knowing that you have that is, is smart. Um, this mage is doing a good job of also doing something to just kind of take up a lot of space. And when you're in these hallways, you really want to kind of be sure you're taking advantage of that. Um, the code does have the Reduvia Bloodblade uh, that they're now sending in our direction and there are some spells. So if we can use the pillars of this area to kind of block spells and again, just isolate some opponents, we're gonna be doing quite well. Um, and we do manage to do that successfully here uh, before kind of the other players can catch up and while the host is still casting. So. Um, we're definitely in a better spot now as we turn this into a 2v1. Um, we're going to throw a sleep pot just near us, potentially um, discouraging players from running forward. However, the host is not really concerned and they run straight into the sleep pot. However, they do not get slept. Um, we're going to be trying to roll the incoming projectiles and then just heal up our bleed uh, before you know everybody gets to aggro again. Uh, we do see the phantom switch over to the twin blade, which is definitely a welcome sight. Uh, your ability to just kind of stand in one place and throw Reduvia blood blade at the opponent is, you know, difficult to play against. Um, and just like the poise break potential on it can really interrupt uh, just what you're trying to do. So. Um, we do manage to uh, <laughs> kind of get ourselves into a little bit of an open area, throw some frost pots, and just kind of look out for the incoming incantation from the host there as they're trying to, you know, get us frostbitten as well. Um, I'm not sure what they're doing, but really we're trying to take advantage of this time when the host is uh, casting that moon spell. So they do get it to connect, and now we're going to be taking more magic-based damage, but it was totally worth it because we were able to isolate ourselves with the phantom. So uh, yeah, just kind of taking advantage of those short bursts of time can be really helpful and that's why having a burst damage type setup is going to be so important um, and really the burst damage here is going to be coming from Millicent's prosthesis and just the fact that some of these players are running quite low vigor. Um, we now do have the PvE on our side too as we were just kind of backpedaling into this area and this host is not long for this world as we do manage to grab a couple kicks and finish them off. Um, our last invasion is going to be just a, a clip from this moment when we were kind of baiting them forward. Uh, there are two that were just kind of hanging out back here and were not interested in kind of progressing through the levels. So um, what I was trying to do is just kind of stand in front of them all edgy and uh, bait them forward. They were not interested, but I did kind of take note that they had pulled out the jar cannon, which 
oftentimes results in players heavy rolling. So I thought this might be a good opportunity for me to get real aggressive on the player that's heavy rolling, um, or so I suspected, and uh, just chase them down before they could successfully swap over to their uh, sword. So um, I was kind of correct in that assumption, and here we now have a player that's going for Lion's Claw a lot, which sets us up quite well for our kind of sneaky um, ravioli step backstab technique. So we're gonna go ahead, swap our talismans, uh, stand there like an edgelord, ravioli step right into their lion's claw and grab the backstab. We'll throw a sleep pot in case they wanted to mash out a stun and then just chase them down with a jumping heavy. So that's gonna conclude our invasion portion of the showcase and we can move on to the duels. Our first opponent is gonna be going for the Sword of Light Ash of War almost immediately, which does serve as a buff for faith weapons, but it is also going to set up a nice backstab as the recovery frames are quite long after the Ash of War. So we managed to grab that pretty early on and they go for their Ash of War with their coated sword, but we do manage to avoid that and just get in some nice kicks. Here we take a pretty good trade that works out since our Millicent's Prosthesis is working in our favor. And then we go for the Dry Leaf Whirlwind, which does most of their HP and we're able to just kind of run in and grab a running light attack and finish them off. So uh, a nice way to use this build against Power Stance Straight Swords. Our next opponent is going to be running Power Stance Cincadeas. So uh, not something you see too much, but it still can be strong with the heavy attack. So we do need to be worried about getting poise broken in those moments. Um, we're going to try to respect their setup. Um, we know that they're going for whiff punishes primarily. And there we can see the burst damage that they get as they go for an L1. Uh, fortunately, we get them a little bit poise chipped and we can go for our Ash of War and then finish them off with a few more kicks and GG's. Um, moving on, we have a player that's running a Gug, so we're gonna need to really worry about the hyper armor and try to set ourselves up for some backstab. So they go for a running light attack, and we do manage to grab that backstab and then follow it up with the Whirlwind Ash of War as kind of a wake up. And then here they are going for some free aims, which is, is kind of bold, especially since they've been backstabbed once. Uh, they do manage to bait a roll with some good wiggle tech, which is definitely nice. And they do manage to get a second anti-air with their um, gugs. So we do need to be a little bit more careful towards the end there, but they were at such low health, we're able to get the finish. Next up, we're gonna be playing against a player that's also running Gugs, and here they're gonna be going for Warcry, which is going to give them a unique heavy attack, but it's also, again, gonna leave them susceptible to a backstab. So here we were not able to successfully space that crouch poke, but we do manage to land the backstab as they go for their unique heavy attack. Uh, we're gonna to try to follow it up with some light attacks, but we do <laughs> predictably get poise broken. However, um, here we can just roll in and grab our second backstab. So we go for a front Pot, frost pot wake up uh, doesn't quite land but it doesn't matter too much they're at very low hp and the fact that we can just kind of get a random jumping attack for the finish uh, means that we're in a pretty good spot here we go for a delayed ash of war with our dry leaf whirlwind and manage to get the finish that way Next up, we're gonna have a player that's running great katanas. So uh, they're also gonna pull out the Smith Script Shield periodically, which is uh, pretty strong and you know kind of just free damage if you hit it and really non-committal. Um, but then they're gonna switch over to the Power Stance Great Katana moveset. And we're gonna need to look out for just kind of their L1s as well as some of their light attacks. Uh, they go for a Weed Cutter, which we do manage to roll. Uh, however, we've got a decent amount of blood loss buildup and need to heal that. Um, periodically, they'll switch over to the Smith Script Shield. Um, um, there we thought we spaced their um, L1, but fortunately we got hit for the full damage, which was quite substantial. Um, this time we do manage to space their running light attack and just kind of finish them off with a couple more kicks. Our next opponent is going to be running the Claws of Night, which can really build up damage very, very quickly. So if you get your successive attack uh, bonus going with Claws of Night, you're going to be uh, doing a lot of damage. So we're going to try to respect that and not mash too much. I think they can outmash us, really. Um, but we do grab a nice jumping attack. And then I really like the light attack follow up after a jumping heavy. And we do manage to get the last bit of HP that we need. Our next opponent is going to be running a great sword, so we're going to be very concerned about the hyper armor and try not to take too many trades if we can avoid it. Ideally, we'd be going for whiff punishes or just kind of jump over their heavy attack and grab some jumping heavies. Um, we do manage to poise break them before they get the hyper armor for the double slash, and we do need to roll out of the second double slash attempt that they go for. 
uh, we go for some running light attacks and also try the dry leaf whirlwind it doesn't connect um, but if they had run in it would have been a good way to finish them off potentially however they do pull out parry shield but we go for the jumping heavy and manage to finish them off our next opponent here is going to be running a offhand shield and a main hand light great sword so we're going to be a little bit concerned potentially about parry attempts and go for a lot more jumping attacks to just try to avoid that here we do see the parry come out um, again switching between jumping heavy attacks and running heavy attacks is going to be pretty nice because the timing is a little bit different but they look very similar so that can just kind of throw off your opponent um, they throw out a few more parries just kind of willy-nilly and we don't need to really do much uh, we feel like potentially we could go for a ravioli backstep I would say this is much harder in the arena. It's much easier in invasions when uh, people are a little bit more aggro, whereas in the arena, they're a bit more passive. So we're at pretty low health. We've taken substantial damage, but here we do manage to land the ravioli backstep backstab and they're pretty low health. And we go for a couple more kicks nothing's really connecting here we swap our talisman so we don't take extra damage although one more hit probably would finish us so we go ahead throw a frost pot which gets them quite low and now they're in pretty much one hit range where we can go for a running light attack um, as always if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing i would appreciate it if you enjoyed this cosplay build definitely let me know in the comments i'm happy to do more cosplay type builds like this um, and had a lot of fun running it this build did come from a viewer suggestion so if you have any of those definitely let me know